Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Autumn Swan and I'm sipping on some cinnamon tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, Mars black, fluorescent orange, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, burnt sienna, which sometimes I call rust <laughs> or burnt sienna, fire red, and cobalt blue. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number four round synthetic brush and I have a number zero round synthetic brush. And I might call these small, medium and large or I'll just call them out by their name as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout the painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's it. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, blue, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a custom sky blue color, and we will be using that in the top portion of the canvas and in the bottom portion of the canvas, we're gonna use our custom sky blue and then we're gonna fade it to a little bit lighter in the center of the canvas. So this will add um, some atmospheric dimension. It will allow us to start the, the sky and the reflection and it'll be a great way to start the painting. So I have pre-mixed my custom sky blue on my palette here. So this is the color I'm headed for. How I got to this is a lot of white, a good amount of blue, well, not a good amount, a little bit of blue. So white, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of black. So I'm in essence making myself a light blue that has a little bit of gray in it. So that way it's what's referred to as desaturated. I'm taking out some of this vibrant pigment so it looks a little bit more natural in tone and I don't want my sky to be the focal point of the composition so I want to in essence kind of dull it down. So this is looking pretty good to me. Once you've got the desired color what you do is put your mixing tool away, take out the large bristle brush, pick up some of that custom color and I'm going to start at, at the top with a left to right brush stroke. I'm gonna create um, what's referred to as a gradient. So I'm gonna have it kind of fade down into a lighter tone. But I'm gonna start it up in this top left-hand corner. I'm gonna do it kind of in a diagonal type of a section. So that way we're also gonna have a little bit of a light implied in the um, 
in the atmosphere, so this will help us start that too. I'm going to come down to the bottom and do something similar in an opposite way. So I'm going to take this blue and kind of go all the way across the bottom like this, and then make my section a little bit wider over here on the left hand side. Now what I can do is start picking up white on my dirty brush. So what this is now going to do is make this sky or this blue get lighter and lighter as it comes towards the center of the canvas. So I can do that down in through here. So I just get it to blend in a little bit with that previous section. And I'm just going to keep working my way towards the center of my canvas. I just keep adding white onto my dirty brush and you can see how it's not white yet. I don't necessarily want it to be white yet. I'm I don't even necessarily want it to be white at all on this step, <laughs> but what I'm looking to do is have it go lighter and lighter as it goes towards the center of the canvas. So right about now I can just start picking up white and pushing my brush, which will release any of that additional light blue that might be in my bristles. So this way I don't have a white center to my canvas. I have a, just a very light blue center to the canvas. And then I'm just going to kind of make sure that I've got everything blended as much as I want. So once I've got this on here, I can just kind of go back with a very light pressure on my brush and just kind of get it to blend out just a little bit, making sure that I didn't miss any spots. And if it ends up looking like you've got a bunch of drifting clouds going through your sky, awesome. Just roll with it. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's, you know, kind of my intention a little bit anyways. Plus, we're going to be putting some, some clouds on that sky. So whatever yours resembles by the time you're done this step, just allow it to happen because there's so many different ways a sky can look and its reflection. So once I've got this done, I am going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. I'm just make sure I got this as smooth as I want. Wash this brush, dry it, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sky and its reflection. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are that sky blue, white, yellow, orange, brown, and maybe a little bit of black as well. I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure your canvas is dry. It'll be a lot easier that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a very soft, sun light source over on the right hand side and then I'm going to be putting some clouds in my sky and then I'm going to reverse it and do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm going to start with my light source. The biggest trick that I can tell you in this step is never ever ever have a lot of paint on your brush at any one time. So I'm going to start with a teeny bit of white and when I say a teeny bit I mean a teeny bit on the on the corner of my brush and then I'm just going to give myself this light area over in through here. Now that was very um, minimalistic, so maybe I need a little bit more than that, so I'll put a little bit more on my brush. I'd rather have to put more paint on my brush than to be, uh, you know, worried that I've put too much on there and that I can't reverse what I've done. So now that I've got a little bit of that light area in through there, I'm going to pick up white plus a tiny bit of yellow on my brush. And again, less is more. You can always add more. I'd rather have more white than yellow on my brush right now. And then I'm gonna just allow myself to give a little bit of a hue around that lighter area that I put in the middle. And again, I'm just going for something really subtle that's just glowing on the sky. Now I'm gonna pick up white plus a little bit of my orange. So again, just a teeny tiny bit. And I can do the same thing, just kind of overlap it on top of that light yellow. I'm not going for anything really vibrant. I just want to have a nice kind of soft glow in my um, sky. So it implies and allows me to have an area for my light source. And it could also imply that it is morning or maybe almost sunset kind of time, whatever you want to um, 
deem it as during that particular time of day is up to you. And this also could allow you to put these little glows on the clouds that we're gonna be putting in a minute. I wanna brighten my sun just a tiny bit. I just put a little bit more white on my brush just to get that to make it so it's not seeing too much of the blue behind it. So that looks pretty good to me. Now that I've got that, what I can do is I'm gonna go do something similar down on the bottom, but I don't need to do it as intense as that. I'm just gonna kind of pick a spot near the bottom of my canvas, put a little bit of white on my brush, put a little bit of white and yellow on my brush, and this is a reflection, so it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be the same size. I'm skewing mine to be a little bit more um, shorter in height, but I wanna have it pretty much the same width. So something like this will work. And then I'm gonna put my white plus a little bit of my orange on my brush and just kind of bring it down to the bottom of my canvas and just give it, again, I'm just going for really minimal um, reflection and even light source in this case. And you can allow for some of that watercolor, what will be the watercolor, but it's the sky color um, to show through. So once I've got that, I've got a great start to my sky. My land is gonna be taking up this big middle area, but I still wanna make sure that I've got that sky in tune. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush cause I'm not quite sure the amount of paint I have on there. And I wanna kind of start fresh when it comes to finishing the sky. So I'm gonna, over on the left-hand side, I'm gonna put what are gonna to appear to be kind of darker clouds at the top and their reflection. And then we're gonna drift some lighter clouds over towards that sun. So I'm gonna pick up my sky blue plus a teeny tiny bit of black paint. Again, teeny tiny bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna put a dark area up in through here and I'm just rubbing it out so it merges or blends in with the um, with the sky color. So very minimalistic. Do the same thing down at the bottom before I start adding light colors. Just kind of go right down to the bottom and give yourself an area that's similar width, but again, it doesn't have to necessarily be as tall. And then I have this little scoot of this one in through here. So now I can just start work my way towards the right. I'm gonna be using white on my dirty brush. I'm gonna use white plus a teeny touch of brown. So white plus a teeny touch of brown on my brush. I love using um, non-white tones for my clouds because it, to me they look a little bit more natural. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna start putting maybe a little fluff on the edge of that um, cloud, maybe little clouds just drifting by in the sky. I'm gonna add a little bit more lightness to them in a minute, but right now just kind of putting them in place, maybe a couple just scooting themselves across that sky. You can even put them right in front of that, um, in front of your light source. So I've got just a little bit of those colors on my brush right now, just kind of pulling them across and through there, maybe one or two over in through here. Just try to keep them non-systematic. <laughs> That's what'll make them look kind of the most natural. So something like that. That's why I use multiple colors on my brush at the same time too. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom and do a similar thing. So white plus a little bit of brown. I've got it at the bottom of this one. So I can kind of do this, just allow myself to get a similar color pattern down below, but it doesn't have to be one for one, just something similar that's gonna allow the viewer to understand that this is in fact some kind of reflection of what's gonna go, what's happening up top. Maybe a little bit more brown on my brush to get these guys to scoot over in through here like this, and then I had a couple in my reflection. So I just kind of traveled down into that similar spot within the reflection. And once I've got that, I'm just gonna add a little bit more light to them. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white on my brush and just give them, that's too much paint on my brush, and I had to wipe it off, and give them a little bit of lightness, maybe over by that side where the, um, where the sun is. So just a little bit of light or white on my brush, on my dirty brush, and just kind of allowing for a little bit of fluffiness to happen in those clouds. 
And of course, yours don't have to be exactly as mine. You can make yours whatever way that you want. If you want them a little bit fluffier, make them fluffier. If you want them softer, make them softer. You could incorporate some of those um, uh, sunset or sunrise or whatever this light source is in your in your painterly head. You can put those colors in it as well. Just kind of lighten up the edge of this cloud in through here so it becomes more visible. And then I'm not going to do much down in through here. Maybe just pull a little couple of little white clouds uh, down in through here just to allow for more atmosphere down at the bottom of my of my sky but I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good and if you do any that are too bright just add a touch of brown or a touch of your sky color even can help you to dull them down can help you to harmonize your colors and then down below again I don't need to do one for one but if I can if I can get some of that similar color pattern it will make it look like it's a similar structure. Oh, I, I missed this whole third one in through here, so we're just going to kind of give myself a couple of light areas. The reflection of the trees is probably going to cover this anyways. Um, so again, don't, I wouldn't um, panic if you're if your clouds aren't exactly the same down in your reflection. I've got a couple of little cute ones in through here, so I'm just popping on a couple of little light spots that'll give that viewer that information that this is in fact something similar. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's hopefully a, a similar um, kind of rendition and that's all I'm gonna be doing. You can certainly fiddle with it as much as you want. You could put more darkness, more lightness, whatever works for you. And then once you've got this done, we're going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for the landscape. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are brown, burnt sienna, yellow, red, and orange, and white. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using my large brush to put uh, the foundation and kind of an outline of where I want all of my trees to go and kind of place the different size of trees that I want. I'm not going for fine-tuned detail in this step. I'm really going for kind of just the mid-tone of the tree, not the super dark stuff and not the super light stuff, but the stuff in the middle. And um, I'm going to be using this to just build my, build my landscape. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of brown and I'm going to draw myself a really loose outline of where the land is going to meet the water. So I'm going to find myself about halfway up or down my left hand side. So that's about right in through here. And then I'm going to come down maybe about an inch, give myself a little marker. And you can do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't have to be exactly um, where mine is. I'm just going to kind of loosely go across like this. This is just going to give me a visual, okay, that's going to be my top, this is going to be my bottom. I'm going to have two almost little island pieces on the side, so those are going to come down a little bit further, but this just gives me my starting place. So once I've got this, what I can do, you can really use any of these colors to create this base coat, but I suggest using darker and more brown as you're down towards the land area. So I am going to actually have a piece of, I'm going to have like a little island here, a little island here, well, a little hill, I guess. <laughs> and then I'm going to have a little grassy knoll behind this island. So you can start anywhere. You could start with, okay, I want a little island. So what I can do is I can pick up a little bit of brown and let's say yellow, and orange, brown, yellow, and orange. And I can say, all right, well, I want a little, little bit of an island or something in through here. And I'm just gonna sit here and just kind of tap the piece of land in that I, that I wanna have. So it doesn't, again, have to be the same exact as mine. That might even be a little bit far out from what I want. So maybe somewhere in through here. And that can be the start of a piece of land. I can do the same thing over on this right-hand side. I can say, all right, well, using the same colors on my brush, I can just kind of tap in this loose 
soft area that's going to have just some dark foliage that has fallen onto the ground. If I want to do another section behind here, maybe I pick up a little bit more brown and a touch of yellow, which will make it a little bit more on the greener side or steer it a little bit more towards green. So even though I'm doing a very similar um, brush stroke, I'm using a different color combination, similar but different, um, to create this piece of land right behind it. And you could, if you needed a little bit more um, visual difference between the two, you could either lighten up the top of this one with a little bit more orange, just so you can see the difference, or you could darken the bottom of that one. But we will be doing another step to, to add highlights and, and shadows and stuff like that, but that will give you an idea of how to just kind of separate the two if, if you needed to. So now I can just work my way back, or I can, I can really kind of pick any area that I want to start. I think I'm gonna put have a big tree up in through here, but I definitely want some darkness down at the base. So I'm gonna just pick up some brown paint, and I'm gonna give myself a very dark area down at the bottom of my, um, of my land area that's gonna meet kind of in front of this, this hill and through here. So as I'm doing this in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I, I definitely wanna have, you know, a bright tree over here, and then I'm gonna have some bright trees in the middle, but I want some good depth within my, um, within my forest, if you will. So I'm adding these, I just picked up more brown. I'm gonna put a bunch of brown down at the bottom of that forest in order to give me um, the ability to build depth within these trees and stuff. And I'm not going all the way black right now because I do wanna put some tree trunks on in a little while. Um, so I'm starting for my dark color, I'm starting with more brown um, and then I'll just build my way up towards some lighter tones later. So I've got a little tree in through here that I wanna kind of do. And right now I'm down, I'm still down pretty far on my trees, I'll build them, I'll build them taller in a minute, but I just wanted to make sure that I had some nice darkness down in through here. So that looks pretty good. Again, I'm still down deep in the forest. Now I guess I could put some back ones. This is where I'm gonna use a little bit of white. I'm gonna put some brown and white so the color is kind of muted and it makes a tree or two look like it's um, back a little bit deeper. So if I wanna have something just looking like it's kind of behind these trees, I have a little bit of brown, maybe a little bit more white than that. A Little bit of brown and white on my brush. And this is gonna set a couple of trees or set them back a little bit further because they're gonna be duller in, in color. And I you can even kind of pull it down just a little bit in between. I'm gonna have this tree is gonna be um, set off in the back. I might have a couple, this one over here might look like it's a little bit in the back, or if you want it to look like there is not many leaves left on the tree, you can just put these kind of um, light, light brownish type of marks, which will almost look like the tips or the twig edges to it. I think I want just a little bit more of this back in through here. And now I can start building my, my more vibrant colors on the trees that are closer, maybe a little bit of this up and through here. And wherever you put this light brownish kind of um, tone is gonna just make it look like it's set farther back. So you can, you can do that to create lots of depth. I'm washing and drying my brush now. And now I'm gonna start just building my, my trees. So I'm gonna start over here. I'm gonna be using my brown plus the other colors. So the brown is gonna allow it me to get these deeper tones within it. So this particular one, I'm gonna start with some brown and some burnt sienna on my brush. And I'm just gonna kinda get this really deep tone down in through here, and then maybe as I go up towards the tip of the tree, the exterior, I start picking up a little bit of yellow and orange on my brush. And this is gonna give me these additional kind of light areas along the exterior. So this is all one big tree I'm doing right now, just to get it in place, make sure that I've got it kind of tapped around the edges. And I like my trees to be 
um, not super symmetrical, so I will have pieces of them sticking out and <laughs> making making them have all kinds of fun um, fun information. So this one in here, maybe I pick up a little bit of my red and burnt sienna and brown. So now I have red on on this particular tree. So you can just add a little bit of red in here. And this one I know kind of is going to go deep in the forest and through here. So I'm just going to tap my tap my brush. I'm picking up a little bit of yellow to go to the edge of this one. And now I've got another kind of mass of, of trees in through there. And I want to put another section in through here, but maybe I want this to be a little bit darker. Um, so I just picked up a little bit more brown. And again, these colors combinations can be whatever you want them to be. I'll help you um, create a more um, detail-oriented appearance as as we develop the painting, but right now we're just kind of putting on some colors. I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow. So this way, this one, maybe, maybe this one still looks a little on the greenish side. You can really just kind of have fun with which ones you want to look like they still have some, some, you know, summer life to them or which ones you want to be a little bit more on the, um, you know, fully autumn side. I feel like I want another little kind of yellow one back here. So I just picked up more yellow as opposed to, and then I need to get that edge to be different. So now I'm picking up a little bit of orange. So again, you can, there we go. Now we got two trees sitting next to each other. This one in through here, I'm going to pick up red. Again, I haven't washed my brush, so I'm picking up red and orange to uh, create this little, uh, this little tree in through here. And you can see as I'm going through this, it, maybe I want a little bush in front of this one. So maybe I just kind of tap that and over in through here, maybe I pick up a little bit more brown to get that side of that tree to be a little bit darker. And again, you don't necessarily need to know where every single tree is going right now. If you just uh, tend to making different color sections, you can always, once those sections are on there, you can always develop it into an individual tree. I think I want a little uh, reddish orange one in through here. So I just picked up a little bit of orange, something like this. I'm just going to pop a little one in back in through here. And of course, your formation, again, doesn't have to be exactly as mine. I think I want a little bit of a um, more greenish one. So again, my brown and, and yellow will create um, more of a greenish tone together. If you wanted yours to again, be really green, you could certainly pick up more of, um, or you could create a green with yellow and black. This one, I kind of want to have some le some um, some branches kind of poking out and being able to see the sky a little bit. So I'm going to just dot this one a little bit more sparingly so I can see some of that background behind it, which you could have, of course, do on any of them if you wanted to. That'll give you a little bit more dimensional element to it. And then over here, I'm just going to pick up a little bit more brown on my dirty brush and get this guy in through here. Again, this one I think I want um, to look like it's got some branches, so I'm going to just really softly get this to almost um, fade up into those little additional colors that I had put, so something like that. And then this is all going to be a big dark, dark area in through here. So I'm going to just use the remnants on my brush. Maybe I'm going to have two different trees in through here. So as I go towards the top, I think I'm going to pick up some um, burnt sienna and red, get the edge of this guy in through here. And I'm doing a dotting stippling technique. So this way I can have the ability to um, have you know, thousands of little marks as I go through this process. Uh, maybe I'll, while I've got this on my brush, I'll put a little bit of this reddish tone in through here. And now I'm going to pick up, um, I think I'm going to pick up some yellow and orange. And again, you can pick up any colors that you want. Uh, I'm going to put this in through here and just kind of get this little tippy top to emerge. And then maybe a little bit more yellow on my brush to get this one to look just a little bit different. And then you can certainly modify this any which way that you want, but we're going to be using, what are we going to use for the next step? We're actually going to be using, 
I want to use my um, number six, or uh, no, my small D, my number zero round brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put that brush away, take out a small detail brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint tree trunks and branches. I'm going to be using my number zero round brush. The dominant colors I'm going to be using are black and brown, and if I feel I need to go into any other colors, I certainly will, and I'll let you know. So you can make as many tree trunks and branches as you want. I'm going to be doing um, an assortment of them. I'm going to be creating, you know, tree trunks coming off of this massive tree. I'm going to have little tiny ones that we'll be able to see in these back areas. Maybe a couple kind of coming in through here, some down here, some over here. I'm going to have lots of tree trunks and branches. <laughs> so I'm going to start with some black paint. You can also, I like to kind of water down my paint a little bit so it's more of like an ink consistency but that'll be up to you if you want to do so if this is a piece of land in through here I can say all right well I've got a tree trunk that kind of just meets the top of it I can then make myself a, a lot of little branches that can come up into into the tree I'm opting to do it this way because I know I'm going to have another layer of leaves to go. So as I'm going through this process, if my branches are too bold or just don't make sense, I, I don't need to worry about that because I have another step with my, um, with my leaves. So that'll allow me to tone any down if I need to. If I want there to appear to be another little tree behind this one I can just put another little branch or if you feel you want to put some little sticks and twigs down at the bottom of that um, land area you can certainly do that you can also pull little um, branches out past your leaves so that'll make it look like there's little um, you know that leaves have fallen already and it'll make it look a little bit more natural so I'm just kind of popping in a bunch of little tiny twigs and sticks or branches, I guess would that would be what they would be called up in the tree, and as many as you want. Again, we're, we've got another layer of leaves to go, so as you're doing this, don't feel that you have to um, make it super duper perfect because you've got leaves that will help to disguise anything. So as I go over into these other areas, you can imagine it to be whatever way you want. You could have lots of little kind of um, trees and, or branches and stuff kind of sticking up from, from the bottom. You can have them going up into the tree. If I want these back ones to have it, I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown with my water and this will allow me to have and I'm hardly touching my canvas when I go for the um, little skinny ones so this will allow back in through here to look like it's got um, the branches exposed you could even put a whole area a whole new area so if you wanted I'm trying to, to not push my brush too hard that's another trick just don't push your brush too hard when you're going for these for these little tiny um, branches. So you can make it into whatever um, intensity that you want. But again, if you do something, you're like, ah, that just was too much. No, again, we've got that additional step that will be coming. You can also, right as this, uh, this area is meeting what's gonna be the water, you can put more darkness. So that's gonna really sell the story of it being um, close to the water. You can also do that over on these little island things. We've got a whole step that's going to um, account for reflections and um, other kind of um, detail-oriented things to accomplish in the painting, but right now if you if you wanted to put you know those little those little nuances in there that's totally fine again darkness down at the bottom of the land areas will allow for them to look a little bit like there's more depth in them so i'm coming into this tree in through here i'm and i keep switching back and forth between my black and my brown i'm using black in the darker areas 
and I'll use um, a little bit more brown in the um, in the lighter areas. So again, just kind of down at this bottom in through here, putting what would be some sticks and some sh you know tree trunks and stuff, picking up a little bit more brown as I go into this tree because it's a lighter tree. So I just picked up a little bit more brown on my brush. And again, you don't have to do this to every tree. If you're going through it and you're saying, well, I, you know, I don't feel as if I, I need to do it to this one because I'm going to put so many leaves on this, on this particular tree, then you don't need to. But if you feel that you're going to have the little peekaboo spots within the leaves or you want to have those little peekaboo spots, this is a great um, step to to um, help you through that process. I'm gonna put a couple of little ones up, sticking out the top in through here. And then this one, I kinda of wanna have like a pine tree. So maybe we're gonna just kinda of do something like that. And again, the, um, the additional step with the leaves will definitely help out. Maybe this gets a little bit darker in through here. Maybe this is little bit more black on my brush so <laughs> get again down here this is going to be like a little bush so I don't really need any tree trunk or anything like that in through there back here I definitely want something up in through here so again um, a little bit of water down black maybe a little bit more brown as I get up towards the top but this could be a cluster of you know birch trees that have yellow type of leaves or you know you could put lighter tree trunks if you wanted to I'm just going for the dark tree trunks because my light source is over there I feel it's on the other side of these trees so I'm allowing for um, that's in my head this we're on the dark side of the trees and again up in these little peekaboo spots I can pull little little branches and that's going to make it look again give you that more realistic kind of appearance to it. And then the I'm gonna do the same process to this area over here. This guy in through here, I think I'll put a couple little um, dark areas down at the bottom and maybe pull up just a little bit. And you can see I'm not, you know, I'm not saying, oh, I have to do one branch. Oh, I have to do another branch. I'm really just being carefree about this and allowing for um, some darkness down at the bottom and some um, some trunks and twigs and stuff like that. I feel like I want a pretty good one in through uh, here, so, something like that. Maybe make that one pretty, pretty dominant. And then again, just adding those little um, thinner branches. Maybe this one kind of comes up like this. And again, black and brown is where I'm headed. Maybe this is a, a dual kind of separating tree and then just a little watered down uh, brown and black will give me all these little tiny tiny branches and again I don't press hard I also uh, am pushing my hand on my canvas which prevents me from pushing my brush too hard into my canvas so it's just a little trick that I I have available to me because so you probably hear my hand rubbing on the canvas because I just know myself especially when I'm doing these little tiny details I want to go fast because I that'll give me some real natural um, and organic brush strokes however when I go fast I have a tendency to not not pay attention to my pressure and that and I make lines that are too thick or um, you know a little bit out of the realm of what I really intended to do so by pushing my hand or resting my hand on the canvas that prevents me from being able to push my brush any farther so it's just a kind of a fail safe little little method I have so I think that that's looking pretty good in through there I'm going to now tackle these guys so again just black on my brush 
well, black and brown, <laughs> I didn't wash my brush, so. And in through here, you can have as many as you want. You know, just have fun with creating your own little fun forest. Maybe I've got a couple in through here. They don't all have to connect to that big tree at the top. This is just um, something that's going to allow you to add that dimensional element into your into your tree. So if I add these branches kind of popping out from behind this yellow area, that's going to explain to the viewer that this big red tree is behind the yellow tree. And again, don't worry if you, you make any of these branches too um, invasive because <laughs> I just made a couple that were a little bit more than I had bargained for. My step where I add my um, my second layer to my leaves will take care of all of that. So I am not worried in the least bit. So that looks pretty good. I just want to add a little bit um, down at this base and through here, similarly to how I did the other one, just making sure that this is nice and um, dark down in through here with, you know, again, it could be sticks, could be brush, could be shrubs, could be whatever you want. And if you don't get it as dark or as filled in as you as you intended on this step, we've got the, the next step that'll, um, that'll develop this even further. So once I've got this done, I'm feeling like that's pretty good for this step. So I'm going to, uh, I'm actually gonna be using my bristle brush again for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this small detail brush away take out your bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna be finishing this landscape. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna probably be using all of my colors except for blue. So white, yellow, black, orange, brown, burnt sienna, and fire red. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back through this and I'm gonna finish adding my leaves finish these little land areas and make any fiddling adjustments that I feel are necessary. So I'm gonna start with my dark and work my way to my light. I don't need much more darkness. However, I do wanna make sure that I've got enough deepness in, in certain areas. Like this little area back here, I kind of want the bottom of that to go a little bit darker. So it will allow for this piece right in through here to look brighter. So those are the little fiddling adjustments that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be using this brush with very little paint on it. So I'm going to start in my darkest areas and work my way to the light. So I'm actually going to pick up a tiny bit of black and see if there's any areas that I want to go a little bit darker. So for me in through here, just on this left side, I kind of want this forest in through here to kind of sink a little bit deeper. So I'm just kind of rubbing in just a little bit of my black. You can even put a tiny bit of this darkness into your trees. So if I wanted a little bit of extra darkness in say the bottom of a tree or like right in through here, I, I feel like I want this to go a little bit deeper in through here. I can just add a very minimal amount of my black and rub it on as opposed to it being really thick. And if I just rub it on and I'm, I'm almost just putting shadows in there without going too, 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 too dark. Um, this is looking pretty good in through here. I want that little darkness up in through there, but I don't necessarily think black is the right way to go. So I just picked up a little bit of brown and I can just kind of put a little bit more darkness right in, in that area in through there. So that's gonna allow this guy to pop out a little bit more. Uh, this looks pretty good down in through here, but I feel I need a little bit something to it. So I am gonna pick up a little bit more brown and yellow. I feel like I wanna add just a little almost greenish hue in through there. So a little bit of brown and yellow worked out for me there and I'm digging this. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this down on the bottom of this guy and in through here. And right now I'm just kind of rubbing it. I'm not um, doing anything uh, other than just picking where I want those dark areas to go a little bit deeper. I'm, I'm digging this brown and yellow combination because it's adding that those um, little uh, real natural tones to me. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that up in this tree as well. That looks pretty good, just deepening a couple of these little areas. And then over in through here, that looks pretty good. Um, 
maybe a little that looks pretty good <laughs> i don't want to touch that um and then i'm coming over here that looks pretty good just a little spot that looks like it needs another coat that's pretty good i'm just kind of going across this i want darker so i'm going to put a little bit of more black on my brush and again just rubbing it on without um that was too much too much paint on my brush so i just need to take off the amount of paint on my brush there we go because i still want to see that tree trunk in there so i don't want to put this black too too thick there we go that can be lighter and then maybe just a tiny bit more darkness in this little forest and through here and then i feel like i want this group this this grassy knoll to be a little bit darker too so just kind of rubbing on a little bit of darkness in through there that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to build, keep going to my light areas. So I definitely need to wash my brush, but first, but first, wait, I'm picking up some more yellow. I feel like I want a little bit more um, contrasting color in through here. So I just picked up a little bit of yellow in through there. There we go. But I don't want to get a my branches to go away so i just wiped a little away there we go washing and drying my brush now i'm going to start just adding the little pops of highlights on these uh leaves and again you could really approach it back to front which would mean taking these guys and doing whatever ones are in back doing those ones first and then working your way towards the front or you could go dark to light so i think I kind of want to go dark to light because that'll allow me to leave white off of my brush until the end. So like in this tree, I definitely want to have some more reds and oranges. So, and maybe yellow. So I'm picking up red and orange and I'm going to start popping on these little highlights within this tree. I don't need to go really heavy with the paint. Um, I just want to add these bits of uh pops of these autumn tones and because i'm not using white yet it's allowing for those colors underneath to have an effect on what i'm putting on top and i'm also going over some of my um my branches and in a minute when i add the white highlights to it it will allow um that it will cover up some of those those branches so that gives that a nice effect I can do the same thing wherever I want this color red and orange I'll put I think I want to put some yellow on that one too so again just red and orange is going on my brush right now and I don't want every tree to look the same so as I go through this process I'm just gonna pick trees that I want the red and the orange in right now and then I'm gonna work my way to the yellow and maybe some green and and white so again I've got red and orange on my brush and if you wanted to go a little deeper just pick up red if you wanted to go a little brighter pick up um the orange and again i'm just dotting i don't want to create a whole new um full layer of these colors i'm just using them as the little twinkly accents on the on the leaves themselves so i think that looks pretty good maybe a little pop of this over in through here and now I'm going to without washing my brush I'm going to start ah yeah I'm not going to wash my brush I'm just picking up some yellow right now because I want to add some yellow in this tree without it overwhelming it <laughs> so I'm using it with my dirty brush so that is another trick if you want it to have that that other additional color but you want it to still um be talking to the existing colors in the tree just don't wash your brush and you can you can use the colors at the same time on your brush and again i'm just kind of dotting allowing for these all to just kind of start talking and working together and then i know that i haven't used white yet so i can um, be safe to kind of tap this color over other stuff because again it'll be transparent and you'll see through it and it'll allow for that to happen. Uh, in through here, I definitely want this to have a lot of um, this yellow kind of hue in through here. I'm gonna be adding a big highlight on this in a minute, so it looks like it's almost catching the light from behind the trees, um, but that, that'll that happen in a minute. This looks pretty good. Maybe a touch on the ends of this one in through here. And then this one, I kind of wanted to stay a little bit darker. I actually think 
before I, I'm not going to uh, pick up any more paint. I think I want to use, I'm using burnt sienna actually, and brown. Burnt sienna and brown are going on my dirty brush for this little guy here. So again, I wanted to have this one to have its own little tone, and you can see I still have some of that little greenish, you know, yellowy greenish kind of tone to it, but by choosing to use a different color, which is the brown and the burnt sienna on my dirty brush, I still have that autumn kind of hue to it, but it also now has its own kind of color to it. So maybe it's a little different species of a tree. Um, I feel like that one's pretty good. Maybe just, just to satisfy my painterly eye, give it another kind of tap in through here. This one in through here, I want to add a little bit more maybe red and burnt sienna. Just again, just tapping my, I'm working my way to the light. That's my intent right now. This one we already hit. This one I don't really need to do much on. This one, maybe just a little second hit right in through here. So now I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go to my lightest of my lights. This guy in through here, I don't really wanna do much to, but I do need, I wanna just soften the edges of it. Um, and same thing with this guy here. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and white and just kind of tap it off on my on my paper towel just so I can um, just make sure that this is soft and those branches that I created aren't too invasive so that looks good and then I can do the same thing on this guy back here so just for this is just for my own painterly I <laughs> to be satisfied <laughs> there we go um, and then I can wash and dry my brush and now I'm gonna add my highlights just be careful when you're adding highlights that you don't go overboard with white so if I want an area to be illuminated a little bit, I'm going to use whatever the color is plus a little bit of white. But again, wipe it off on your paper towel or something so it's not so white. You almost can just like blend it on your paper towel if you want to. And then you can just add little pops of that brightness. And again, you don't need a lot. Just itty bitty bit is going to tell the viewer to understand that there's a light source over there that's catching or giving a little bit of light. This one I do want kind of brighter because I want it to almost feel like it is sitting behind this guy here. Um, so I'm adding a little extra on this guy, but that's just, you know, again, something I'm choosing to do. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. Um, so that's good. If there was any other ones that I felt wanted that, I could certainly kind of like this guy up here, I think might want some of this. So I just kind of add that on there. Maybe a little tip to this guy in through there. That looks pretty good. And then I just need to intensify wherever else I, I feel needs it, um, which isn't very much. I think I'm just gonna go yellow and white right now just blend it a little bit on my on my palette or on my brush I kind of want to put a little lightness over on the edge of this guy here and if you're going in for these little highlights and it's too much for you then just pick up some of that original color like that was a little bit too much so I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange also to just intermingle and I'm just doing little tiny dots if you want to add a little top to a bush you can go ahead and do that if you want to add that little edge to the tree so people can see it, just adding a tiny bit of extra lightness will make it pop right out for you. Um, this back here, maybe this gets just a little tiny bit of lightness at the tippy top of it, something like that. So you can see that it's part of that tree. This one I kind of want to keep dark. Maybe we just get a little bit more yellow and white at the edge of this one and through here again I don't really need to do much I do this um, these branches are a little bit too much for me so I definitely want to do something to those I'm going to just pick up on my dirty brush red yellow and orange <laughs> that's the beauty of autumn colors you can really um, put as many as you want in the tree without having to um, say that you did something wrong <laughs> and then these kind of just merge into each other i'm thinking that's all i want to do i'm i'm looking at it and i'm thinking um that you know i've got everything oh i need these little land areas there's one more thing wash and dry my brush 
I want to do those little land areas. They just really need a second coat. They're kind of smooth looking. So I'm just going to pick up um, a little bit of, for this one, I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna. Maybe put that down at the bottom. Maybe a little bit of yellow and white. Pop this on just to give it a little bit of life. A little bit of something. Just a second coat. Maybe this guy back here uh, just gets some black with yellow because I kind of want it to be on the greener side on my dirty brush. So just giving it a second coat. So it looks like it's got a little bit of depth to it. And then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that yellow and white mixture on my dirty brush. Give this a little bit of um, substance, like there's maybe some leaves that are, are sitting on it. Again, you can make it as bright or as dark as you want. It doesn't matter. That looks good to me. I think I want a little bit more burnt sienna and brown down at the bottom of this one, just so it uh, it kind of reads as a little bit more in the shadow down at the bottom. And you could, of course, make it go further down as well. Just picked up a tiny bit of black too. Let's get this go just a little bit further down. There we go. And then we're going to be using... What are we going to use for the next step? We're going to actually be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the reflection of the landscape. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and one of my small details, so probably my number zero detail round. Um, I'm going to be using all the colors that I used in my landscape. So that's going to be all of my colors except for blue. So white, yellow, black, orange, red, burnt sienna, and brown. And what I'm going to be doing, the reason why I'm doing this in one step instead of how I did the top in three steps, I don't want to get hung up in the details of it. I want it to be loose. I am just looking for a similar color pattern down in the reflection. So that's why I'm, I'm opting to do it in one step and it's gonna be much looser. So that way it'll look like the beautiful swan that we're gonna be painting has moved the water or maybe there's other stuff in the water that is having an effect on skewing our landscape so it's not a mirror image, just a reflection, a loose reflection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the top and kind of give the top of my reflection, especially this like darker area, so I can kind of outline or start where it's gonna be dark and kind of um, merge it into these little um, islands and then we're just gonna work our way down that landscape. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black paint. You can also use a touch of water, just a little bit on your brush will work. I'm going to start right up here at the top and again I don't need it to be perfect I'm just going to go back and forth left to right if you feel that you want to bring that darkness up further into the landscape you certainly could but I'm going to just kind of opt to bring it down in through here so this will be kind of the the um not necessarily shadow making but it'll Oh, as if the land is kind of maybe casting a little bit of a shadow on the um, on the water itself. So once I've got that established, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just working my way into the the shapes and the colors that I see. So I do know that when we started this, we started with a lot of brown and something else. So brown and burnt sienna, brown and yellow, brown and orange, brown and, and red. So that's where I'm going to start with this reflection. So I don't need to wash my brush. I can just pick up brown and something. So I have a lot of brown at the bottom of this landscape, bottom of this section right in through here. So I'm going to start with brown on my brush and I'm just going to kind of go back and forth left to right until I meet an area that might not be just brown. So I'm gonna, I've meet in this area, so maybe this is brown, burnt sienna, and yellow. So now I've got a little section in through here that can resemble my, my island. Same thing with here too. 
I don't know if I would see a lot of the reflection of this one, um, but I'm going to start right in through here with this little guy. That needs a little bit more burnt sienna on it, so something like this. And again, I'm just going for a real loose interpretation. The, the, the biggest trick is going to be getting these to um, not go too far down. So as I'm doing this, I have to kind of be mindful of how far down I want this to go. Do I want to see the top of these trees before the end of my canvas? And my head says yes. So I'm going to give myself a couple of strategic marks so I know where this is going to lie. It could be kind of one for one in height because I, if I do this and see how high this is, it still lands in my canvas. I don't know if this one is going to, but I want it to. So this one's this tall. If I come down here, nope, that throws it off my canvas. So what I just did there was I told myself I'm going to skew my reflection so it's a little bit shorter than this, which you can do. You can skew it shorter, longer. It's all going to be whatever angle that viewer is looking at it. So because I want it a little bit shorter, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to uh, pick up a touch of... Um, common color in these is probably just brown and I'm going to give myself a couple of markers at the tops of some of these trees. So if I come directly down here, this is my tallest tree, come directly down very close to the edge of my canvas, just make myself a little marker. This one's a little bit shorter so I can just come down here and go a little bit shorter. This one come down, I'm quite a bit shorter than these guys what you could also do is just go for the tall ones. One, two, this other tall one is about the same height, maybe a little bit lower than that. So when you come over here, you're going to be a little bit closer to, to there. So just giving myself these markers allows me, this is about halfway between these guys. So I can kind of come, I would say maybe somewhere in through here is going to give me that. It just gives me kind of these pointers. This one's a little bit higher, so I need to put this one maybe a touch higher than that one. So one, two, three. It goes one, two, three. And that just gives me this one right here, somewhere in through here. Just gives me kind of an idea of where those heights are and how I can portray them. So again, I'm going back to brown and I'm going to, I know a lot of this is brown, so I'm going to just kind of take this and go left to right, giving myself the shape of this tree. It gets a little bit darker at the bottom so I can pick up maybe a little bit of brown and black. Not a lot of the black but just a little bit just to give me that darkness at the bottom of that landscape. So something like this. I know my that's going to be higher in through there. So again I'm going for my dark tones right now in order to um, set my stage. I have very little bit of paint on my brush and I'm using a left to right brush stroke. The colors in the water can be different at either darker or lighter than what you're seeing in the landscape simply because of whatever's underneath that water can be changing the color of your reflection. So don't be alarmed or afraid if you've got um, colors that are way different than you had have up top they can be so don't be don't be saddened or anything like that I'm looking for this one's gonna be a pretty red one and through there so I'm gonna just kind of put my darker areas again I'm a little bit of black and brown right now um, and I'm just going left to right I see a dark area in through here a little dark area in through here that's pretty good to me and again trying to keep it loose I don't, again, I don't feel like I'm going to see much of this reflection. I might see just a little smudge here, so maybe a little bit of black and green. I'm saying green. There is no green. Black and yellow is going to look green on my canvas. <laughs> so maybe that's like that. And then, again, just loose, 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 loose. That's all I'm doing, loose, 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 getting these two little guys um, I feel I need a little bit more separation between here and my water, so I'm going to pick up just a little bit more black. So I'm just adjusting these darkness um, areas before I move forward too much because I want to make sure that I can see what I want to be able to see. That looks pretty good because um, I can start adding my, my colors as soon as I feel 
uh, safe to do so. A little bit of brown. So this is going to be this tree in through here. And I can add these darker tones as my base because that's what I did as my base of the um, of the regular trees. So I can just follow that same suit. Maybe I don't see these back trees in my reflection because of the angle. So you can really um, dictate what, you, what you're able to and not able to see as you go through the process. That was too yellow. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna to tone that down just a little bit. There we go. Um, and then that one's going to be red, but I still can put a little darkness on it. And then I've got these guys up and through here. So again, this front one is going to have a little bit more of the yellowish tone and the back one is going to have more of the reddish tone. So I just picked up burnt sienna and brown to get that little reflection started. And I'm just going for a color pattern. And I, I say that a lot when it comes to, um, to reflections because I myself and I'm sure everybody else can get kind of hung up on the details of a reflection, especially, you know, when you're doing these kind of paintings. Um, I'm going to start, uh, when do I want to do my branches? Let's throw in some branches right now and trunks. So small brushes where I'm switching to right now. I'm just going to kind of give myself the really loose and... Um, interpretive kind of way of doing little reflections. I just kind of went down from that main one and I'm going to uh, just go right down below it and give myself a re really loose interpretation of the um, of the trunks and branches only on the ones that I think are going to matter. So maybe this one in through here and then this one in through here. And again, in the reflections, you don't have to do much to, to sell the story. This is going to have uh, this yellow one in through here. So maybe, maybe a little bit in through here. And reflections go directly towards the viewer. So I think oftentimes reflections versus shadows can get a little confusing. Um, but if you can kind of keep in, in head, they go towards the viewer. When the viewer is standing there, but in a photograph... <laughs> They could be they could be elsewhere because maybe the the person who took the photograph was standing at a different angle. So, you know, that's going to be that was probably too much to the right. Um, so that could be, you know, as the the viewer could be standing in a different spot, I suppose. But generally speaking, I have to go directly below here. Generally speaking, the. Um, the reflection is going to go right towards the viewer. So as you're doing things, if you ever get confused, that's a good rule of thumb to just kind of keep in mind. And again, I'm just doing a very loose kind of rendition of these um, trunks. And they were just kind of the big ones right below the, there. And now I can start adding my, uh, my lighter tones. I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I don't want too much black or anything on there. And then I just start, I used red and orange and yellow in this tree. So I have a little bit of red and orange on my brush. I'm going to just kind of go back and forth. I'm going left to right. You could certainly um, do dots if you wanted to, but I definitely just, I'm picking up some yellow and brown to get this kind of greener um, illusion on this other side. Um, whatever comfort whatever brush stroke is going to be comfortable to you to to get that illusion. Um, I've got some orange in through here and a little bit of red. So this is this little guy in through here. So something like that. And I'm just kind of watching that color pattern. I got a little bit of red. I just picked up a little bit of red. I'll go to my light, light colors in a minute. But right now, I'm just going to pretty much do um, the colors that don't have uh, white in them right now. So just red, orange, and yellow. And maybe some yellow and burnt sienna on this guy in through here. And I'm just going for a similar color to what I had done in the first place. Again, I don't need it perfect. We're going to have a, the beautiful swan that's going to be taking up the show in a little bit. So I don't, you know, this is all really, for lack of a better terminology, just background noise. 
literally and figuratively. <laughs> so I'm just allowing myself to um, believe that and to not get overwhelmed by the um, but by what could be an overwhelming task with the with the reflection I'm just you know going one for one I have this brown mark here that I definitely want to disguise so I just picked up a little bit more brown so that was a little a, a little aggressive kind of um, mark I made but that's fine we can get rid of that uh, let's see I need a little bit more um, red and um, red in here I think there we go before I head into and a little bit of yellow up in through here. There we go. She's coming alive now. And then I'm going to just hit those little light spots. So yellow and white was the dominant color for my light spots. And again, I didn't wash my brush. So I'm just um, allowing for everything to just talk really well together. Maybe a little bit more yellow than that. There we go. That looks pretty good as the highlights on this guy in through here. And you can pull those colors into the water. It doesn't have to um, be just within that tree. But if you're seeing light on this side, put light on this side. If you're seeing this really light spot in through here, I definitely want to accomplish that somehow. So just popping it in where I feel it would be believable to the viewer. I've got this little guy up in through here, which I haven't done yet. So I'm going to put that yellow and white. Pop this little guy on in through there, a little bit on um, this little guy. And it's easy to get confused. So just so you know, if you have to go just one at a time, just go one at a time. That looks pretty good. I want a little bit more orange in through here to get this guy to pop out a little bit more. So I just put a little bit more orange on my brush. And I'm really just kind of going as loose as I can, maybe a little bit of red on this guy. I'm just going for a color pattern right now, not perfection, just color pattern. So again, my, my swan is gonna be in through here. I'm thinking that that's pretty good in through there. That was not unnecessary. Maybe a little bit of orange and um, my yellow white on top of this guy to get the top of that to reflect right here. And then I would definitely um, let mine dry for a few minutes and see if there's anything else that I felt could benefit me in this reflection. I'm thinking that it's pretty good from this close right now. <laughs> but, oh, I need a little highlight right in through here. Um, but when I step away, I might feel that there's, um, you know, a little bit more work that could be could be had. Um, and if I if I do, then I'll I'll just fiddle with it a little bit more. But this is. This is the dominant um, process that I'm doing on it. And then we're gonna be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can of course fiddle with it as much as you want. And then you'll want to uh, put this brush away, take out a drawing utensil and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our swan. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna create some basic shapes, and by the time we're done, we'll have something that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. I do recommend that your canvas is dry before this step as well, because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. So I'm going to find myself the center of my water line. So wherever this main area kind of meets the um, water, you're going to not not the center of that, the center of the whole canvas, but it's on the water line. So somewhere in through here, I've already kind of marked mine so you could see where I was headed. So it's not the center of my canvas because that's about up here. It's going to be on that water line or that horizon, yeah, water line, land line, whatever you want to call it. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the left of that about a half of an inch and I'm going to make myself a little circle that's going to be about a half of an inch wide by a half of an inch tall. So something like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come on the right hand side of this circle. I'm going to come down about uh, one to about three inches and give myself a marker. So somewhere it, right about in through here. Might be a little bit to the right. 
it's a little bit to the right of that circle. So somewhere in through here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a hor horizontal line that is, I would say, about four inches long. So somewhere like that. I'm now going to connect here to here, but this is going to be the back side of the swan. So it's going to be like a oval type of shape, but we're going to pop it out a little bit at the tail. So I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to go up like this. You can give yourself a couple of little, um, little wing type of points in through there. I'm going to bring it back like this just a little bit and then back out for the tail in through here. And then you can just kind of meet it in through here. So it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just something that helps guide us through the painting process. And even the tail, I just have mine out a little ways. And it's going to be prettier <laughs> when I paint it. It's not going to just look like a stick like that. So now this is the, the head. I'm going to connect that to this chest part. So in through here on this right hand side, I'm going to connect that to right about in through here on the on the circle. So I can take this, I'm going to come down and back out like that. And then at the top, I'm going to connect the top to right about here. So you're going to come up here maybe about a half of an inch. So I take from here and I'm going to bring this around like that and give myself a pretty swan neck. And then you can just pop out a little tiny beak in through there. That's going to totally work out and it doesn't have to be a perfect drawing at this point. So once I've got this, I do want to kind of have an idea as to where my reflection is going to go just so I don't um, make it too wide or too small or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of give myself a real jaggedy kind of line that's representational of a similar shape only upside down. So something like this and then I've got my my neck in through here and then I can just kind of bring it down like that. So that just gives me a good idea as to, and you could even say, okay, well this one's about this high, this one could be shorter because we've shortened up all of our um, reflections because of the amount of space. So I've shortened my reflection a little bit too, or and or it can skew. It can be the the swan is making ripples in the water, so you could have little pieces that come out, but I'll show you how to do that during the drawing process or during the painting process. So that's all I'm going to do for my drawing. You can erase that center mark if you made one like I did. And then I'm going to be using my um, number four round brush for the next step. So you can just put your drawing utensil away and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a base coat onto our swan and its reflection. So I'm gonna be using my number four round brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black and white, and I'm gonna pre-mix myself a gray color, which I have magically already done, so you can see where I'm headed. So on my palette here is my gray color that I'll be using as the base coat. How I achieved this is just black and white. I didn't put any special recipe in here, just black and white to get myself a, I'm going to call this like a light to mid-tone gray. Uh, I don't want it to be too, too dark because I am going to be doing little shadows and stuff, which I'll want to be darker than this. And I'm going to be doing highlights, which will be lighter. So think of it as like the mid-tone for the swan. So somewhere in here is good for me. And once I've got that color, I'm just going to color in my swan. I'm, I'm not doing anything fancy right now, just trying to stay within my lines. And if you're going through this process and, you, and you're thinking that your outline is not perfect, you don't have to follow that outline 100%. It's really just there to guide you to a shape for painting. It's not necessarily there to say you have to follow me exactly, especially since we're using chalk. Chalk is very easy to erase. You can certainly leave some of it and then come back and erase. I got a little bump in my canvas. Get rid of that. It was a little thick spot of paint that I just must have happened during my other process. Um, but as I was saying, you, you can go right to your chalk mark, you can paint over it or leave a little bit of it, one, to help you through the painting process, or two, because you just don't feel that it was the right shape. You can always reshape it during this during this coloring in process. 
So as I get to the um, tip of the feathers in here, or what would be the wing, this is where I'm going to put maybe just a little bit more detail in the edge of it. So maybe I bring out a little extra pieces that look, will look like the little edges of the of the feathers. And this was where, again, if some of your chalk marks still shows, awesome. Just once the paint dries, you can just go and take a little bit of water to erase that um, chalk mark. I do have a tendency to leave my guidelines visible for a while um, simply because I have a tendency to make my objects much bigger <laughs> than they than I intend them to be. Um, so I like to oftentimes leave a little bit of my outline. I think I want to pull that up just a little bit. There we go. Um, which helps prevent me from going too big. So during the painting process, you might find that I leave a lot of my chalk mark or when I'm going into something like this where this section is going to be similar in color to this section, but I don't want to lose that information as to where they both meet, I'll leave a little bit of my chalk mark or my guideline to show. So similarly to how we did our reflections on the um, of the land. I'm going to be using a very loose left to right brush stroke. In this um, particular stage, I know that I'm going to be using, um, I'm going to have another step to it, but I can also leave some of that watercolor intermingled with my reflection. So don't feel that they can't kind of intermingle with one another. You can you can leave one because um, the water could be moving and that's going to allow, that's going to create these little pockets of the color being reflected in um, the, the neighboring water. So again, I'm just kind of going left to right. When you get to the edge, you can certainly pull this, you know, put little marks that are farther than the reflection that will that will really make it look like the water is moving. So I can bring some of these colors down in through here. You can even break up like where the beak is gonna be. I can break that up a little bit and just put little dots and that'll just make it look like it is um, being pulled in the motion of the water. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using my small brush for the next step. So you can put this number four round away, take out the small detail number zero round and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the swan, not the reflection, just the swan up top. I'm gonna to be using my small number zero round. I'm gonna be using black, sky blue, white, yellow, uh, red, and that might be it. Maybe some of that gray if I need to, and I don't know if I said black and brown. <laughs> They just keep coming to me as I, as I keep talking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some very minimal amount of detail on the face just to give it to the iconic swan look to it. And then we're going to be adding strategic highlights and shadows onto the neck and the body in order to give it some form and a little bit of dimension and texture within those feathers um, on the backside. So I'm going to start at the face with a tiny bit of black and a little bit of water on my brush. So I can put the, um, I'm gonna call it the mask, <laughs> the mask and the beak in place. So the, uh, the bird has a tiny little bit of black on the end of its nose. So I'm just gonna put a little black marking on the end of the nose. You can even leave a little bit of your gray showing around the edges. Then I'm going to, right where the, um, the circle kind of met that beak in through there, I'm going to jut out a little black section. Um, a lot of these swans almost have like a black forehead piece that kind of almost hangs over the um, beak. So I'm just going to put that in there and then it kind of goes right into where the eye is going to go. So I'm just going to kind of pull this back and make myself this um, kind of a swooping curved line. Down towards the um, down towards the beak like this, and then I'm going to color in this little section right in through here with a with a touch of black. So where the where the eye is right above that um, beak area, 
and this forehead area. I don't know what the technical term of it is, but so this black area, we're going to call it the mask, something like that will, will work for me. And then there's a little nostril area, if you will, somewhere in through here that just kind of goes down that beak. So now what I'm going to do is I want to uh, need to put some color in that beak. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush. The colors are going to be red, orange, yellow. I'm going to have it darker on the left hand side and make it bright on the right hand side. So I'm starting with a little bit of red on my brush and I'm going to go right up to that black area over here on the left hand side. Then I kind of wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange. I'm doing a very tiny little gradient on this beak. I can even put a little bit of this on the tip in through there. And then I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of yellow kind of overlap it. And then on that right hand side, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up a little bit of white. So I just created this really quick gradient around that beak and it allowed that beak to, to show up. So if it wasn't, if you felt that you needed a little bit more black, or I feel like I want to kind of accentuate this little tip a little bit more, I just picked up I picked up black with somebody, something else on there that picked up a little bit of black just to kind of give myself, um, uh, make sure that this is as dark as I want it on, on the tip of the beak. Um, but you could certainly modify yours as much as you want. And then I, I think I want a little bit more orange too, maybe on the right side of that line. So something like that. So just a little tiny, little tiny beak. Um, then I'm going to wash my brush and I'm picking up a touch of uh, white paint just to give myself a little highlight on the right side of this black section. So I want it to be visible to the viewer. So I'm just going to kind of highlight it just a, a little tiny bit um, and you can blend it back into the black if it went too much on you, but just a little tiny bit and you can even stick a little tiny sparkle where that eye would be with a little tiny bit of white so just itty bitty sparkle so once I've got the the face done I can start moving on to the rest of the body I'm gonna have shadows on the bottom side and in between the um, the wing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my uh, uh, what color do I want to use I actually think I want to use a little bit of black and brown so black and brown is going on my brush with a little bit of water I'm gonna put a uh, nice shadow right here in the front and you can even blend it up a little bit into the um, the chest area this again is just gonna give you some nice contour at the bottom of the bird picking up a little bit more brown gonna put some down at the underside of this tail feather in through here so this I just picked up more brown this time and then right down at the bottom I'm picking up a touch of black. Looks like I should be putting a little bit more darkness in through here to separate um, this side edge. And then maybe just a nice kind of sharp line where that, not necessarily too sharp, but nice dark line where the bird is meeting the water. So something like that. I'm now gonna pick up a little bit of um, my sky blue plus black. So I'm using my sky blue to create um, like cooler shadow tones on this right hand side. So I have sky blue and um, black and I'm going to put this as the bottom side of this um, wing over on this side. So there's a couple of different pieces to the, um, to the bird wing body and this is just separating those pieces from one another. So again, this is black plus my sky blue. I'm going to put a little bit of this in through here and it's adding a really nice shadowed tone to this side of the bird and that separated that out. I think I need uh, to put a little bit of it in through here as well and maybe just a little bit down in through here and then maybe a little bit down at the bottom of the tail feather in through here to transition into that um, into that brown color that I just put. So again, these are just little little tones that will set this down deeper. Now I'm going to just pick up my sky blue and I'm working my way up towards the highlight 
of this um, of these wings. So I'm gonna or these feathers. So I've got two different little sections to the feather in through here or this wing. So there's a section in through here and then there's a section here. So I'm just using a little bit of this light blue or sky blue to transition that kind of grayish tone that we just did up into the light area. And you'll see how this transitions in just a minute here. Gonna get this little section in through here. So I'm just kind of building my way to the light. This tail feather is actually catching at the top. It's catching some of that sunlight. So we're gonna put a, a big uh, bright area on the top of this tail feather in just a second. I'm gonna bring some of this sky blue up this uh, back side of the neck a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit, because we're gonna make that neck a little bit warmer in tone. So that looks pretty good. And I'm now picking up white paint to give myself a bright highlight on this, um, on this tail that's just kind of popping out over on the other side. And again, this is just white paint, so I'm gonna allow this to be really bright, maybe give myself a couple little um, spots for that, for that tail to just kind of pop out a little bit further than the rest, that little tail feather. And you can get it to blend in a little bit with that blue if you need to. And then picking up more white to do the same thing up at the top of um, this side of the, of the beautiful swan. And I'm using kind of a directional brush stroke, which implies the direction that the um, feathers are, are laying in. So, and I'm concentrating on having this bright white really at the top side and catching that the light from, from the light source that's on the other side of the, of the swan. So right in through here, I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit to, so we can see that side of it and then just bring it here. And then I can just kind of fade it off into this top little part of the feather or wing. I'm not a swan specialist, so I'm, I probably got the, the names of the parts a little skewed, but that's okay. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, it's looking pretty. Let me just kind of blend this out a little bit. And you can pick up back up any colors that you want. Like I just picked up the, the light blue just to get these to transition a little bit better. And you just kind of keep fiddling until you've got that, um, that transition the way that you want. Like I want a little bit more of um, actually the blue and the black just to kind of get this just sunk in just a little bit more in through here. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I don't know. Of course, I'm gonna just wanna keep fiddling. <laughs> Maybe just a little, little bit more darkness right in through here. So I'm gonna do the neck. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna pick up white and brown. So white and brown. I want this to have a little bit more uh, texture up on this neck in through here. So I picked up a little bit of white and brown to give me just a little bit more warmth on this, uh, on these neck feathers as they're transitioning out of the darkness because they're taller or they're, they're up higher in the atmosphere. So I'm putting just a little bit more warmth in this little, um, in the texture to those feathers and do the same thing on the face as I'm just kind of bringing this towards the um, bright spots that I'm gonna be putting. I leave a little bit of that uh, darkness underneath the chin. Actually, I'm gonna pick up a little bit um, of black and brown just to put a little tiny shadow right underneath here. That's itty bitty bit. And now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go in for some white to get um, a nice bright highlight around the edge of my swan in through here, so just little white. And I'm just kind of tapping it so it gives it a, a tiny bit of texture, but not, not so much that this looks like long fur. I'm just looking for it to look like, you know, wet feathers. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this inside. And I'm gonna add a little bit of, um, maybe a little touch of yellow to it as well, but I just kinda wanna get the white on here first and then see how much I want to adjust it after that, that's looking pretty good. I'm in a little awkward position right now. I'm trying to, so we can, so we can all see what I'm doing here. So that looks good. I definitely need some on the top of the head. So I'm gonna put some right in through here. And you might also find as you're doing this that you feel that you wanna reshape the head in any way, whatever 
you feel is necessary to do um, during this stage, it's it's totally up to you. The head's going to be the part that sees the, the sunlight the most, um, but if you feel that you need uh, that section to be bigger or smaller or whatever the case may be, you can certainly um, go ahead and do that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white with uh, yellow and orange, so white, yellow, and orange, just to give myself a little tiny glow, maybe on the feathers right underneath this uh, chin in through here. And again, this is just to kind of add the, the glow from the sunset or sunrise or sunset colors. If you want to do this, that's great. If not, I'm sure it's going to look beautiful without. Um, and I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I think of just a little extra um, brightness on this tip of the beak, though. I feel that this needs to be just a little bit brighter in through here, maybe bring it out just a little bit. There we go. That's looking good. So now I, th I think that's all I want to do to it. Um, I am going to be using my number four round for the next step. So you can certainly fiddle with this as much as you want. Um, and then you can put this brush away, take out your number four round, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the swan's reflection and the ripples in the water. I'm gonna be using my number four round. The colors I'm gonna use are black, brown, white, sky blue, yellow, and orange. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know, because I might use red too, but I don't know. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be very loose to add this reflection and I'm gonna do a similar color pattern. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of ripples cause we wanna imply that the swan is coming from over here. And <laughs> so we'll add just some little trailing ripples and maybe a little wave ripple in front of it too. So I'm gonna start with my dark and move my way to the, my light. I will be using water on my brush to help give me um, some good fluidity in my in my brush stroke so I can really kind of manipulate it the way I want. So I'm just making sure that right underneath my bird is nice and, and dark. And wherever you see like a dark area going up the bird, you can imply that in your reflection. So just a little bit of extra darkness in through there. I've got a little bit of extra darkness coming um, right here. I just put a tiny bit of brown on my brush as well. So just a little bit of brown in that reflection to it to capture that um, that darkness in through there. While I have the dark on my brush, I also have darkness in the face, right? So I've got my, the top of my head is reflected in through here. So the face is gonna be somewhere in through here. And all I really need to do is just do little implications of the color pattern. So that would be the dark part of um, the 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 mask area and then I can do maybe a little tiny black area for the beak in through there and that, that's all the dark areas within oh I have these guys too I'm picking up a little bit of my um, dark blue or uh, sky blue with my dirty brush so sky blue with my dirty brush so I have sky blue and black on my brush right now so I've got a little little darkness in through here little darkness in through here and here. So it's dark, but it's not as dark as the black. So that blue is what helped me out. And I've got a little bit kind of coming up this area in through here. So I do want to start my ripples with this dark paint on my brush. So I just put a little bit more water in my on my brush with the black and the um, sky blue. And right now I can just kind of give myself just these little um, motion kind of trail of where that that bird is coming from so the ripple is going to be kind of tighter the closer it is to the object and wider or looser the farther away it gets so if I just and it's usually if it's a moving object it, it's usually like in an oval type of um, sh uh, formation so I'm just going to get this to go far away 
from itself as it's getting farther away from the um, from the thing that's moving it. So I've got that, and I'm just really giving gentle kind of motion um, in here with that water on my brush, and it could be pushing the water up in front of it a little bit, but not too far. The ripple's gonna be bigger behind it than it is in front of it. It's just gonna be pushing that water a little bit in front of it. So that looks pretty good for the um, for the ripple or the motion. And this is also the time where you can start to get rid of any chalk marks. If you have those still visible, you can take whatever water you have on, on your brush and get rid of little chalk marks. So now I'm gonna just move towards that light. So I'm gonna just pick up some of my sky blue and I see there's a little kind of mark in through here. There's a mark um, in through here. Something like that goes up that tail a little. Definitely on this side of the, of the beautiful bird in through here, along here. So again, I'm just kind of wiggling my brush back and forth, left to right, allowing for, and I'm putting a little water on my brush, allowing for the um, motion of the water to show some of this, not show some of it, let it kind of um, skew out. I can skew it out into my ripples in the water. Maybe I've got a couple little reflective um, marks of the, the color from the bird that just kind of makes its way a little tiny bit into that reflection or into those ripples, because when it ripples, it's gonna reflect all the colors that are around it. So you can certainly have fun with that. And now I'm gonna just, I, uh, I have that neck. The neck was brown and white. So I definitely wanna add just a little bit of that tone in there. So I stay true to the, uh, the top portion. So brown with a little bit of white, just so I can get that, make sure that that kind of reads as the reflection for that. And then I'm just gonna pick up some white right now to get a lot of this white um, transferred down into my, into my reflection. And again, you can see I'm just really kind of using this squiggly type of brush stroke and maybe this kind of pops into this reflection over here or you know skews out just a little bit more. I've got the tail feather that's gonna be, um, so this is here, so it's gotta be on top of here. And again, just kind of watching, I'm watching up top and trying to reverse it, but in a very loose way. <laughs> so we've got that, I feel like that should be a little wider too. And adding extra stuff up top. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put this on the front of the, um, of the neck in through here and then just kind of pull it. And again, I'm just kind of loosely rippling it. It's on the top of the head in through here. And then maybe, so the top of the head then kind of gets into that face, something like that. And then little tiny edge along that nose. And I've got to put my, um, my additional colors in that face too. I'm just pulling these out just a little bit more so they look like they're in motion a little bit more and putting a touch of water on my brush just to kind of catch a tiny bit of this ripple and again, I don't need much in this ripple. It's really just to help the viewer understand that there is in fact motion in this water. So you can really just, even just, I just watered down my, my brush a little bit just to kind of get a transparent or translucent type of um, effect in through there. A little bit more white on my brush just in, in here, just to kind of get that, that going. And then maybe just a tiny bit in front of my um, in front of my bird. And then I just need a tiny bit of those other colors from that mask. So I definitely need um, a tiny bit of yellow and orange. I might not need the red, but yellow and orange definitely. Yeah, I'll use the red too, it might as well. So I have yellow on my brush, orange, and again, just kind of skewing these colors in through here, teeny tiny bit of red. Again, I don't need much, just itty bitty bitty, itty bitty bit. I put a little bit on that neck too, so I could even kind of capture a tiny bit of that on both sides of that neck, something like that. And I feel like I need a little bit more definition down this back side of the neck, so just kind of put that in through there. I think that that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit more darkness 
in this uh, area right in through here too so we can I just picked up a little bit more black just so we can really capture that dark underside or backside of the bird so we can again just make sure the viewer understands what's going on that looks pretty good and then I would just you know this is my my fiddling time so as as I'm um, kind of saying do I do I want anything more in through here can I see can I see that tail you could even pull in more of the um, colors from around if you wanted to if, if the reflection of the bird wasn't um, amped up enough for you and you needed more contrast around it you could certainly put more of the colors from the surrounding areas but I'm thinking I'm thinking that that's too much on the beak now that I put my head back so I'm going to just kind of dull that down with a little bit of, of black and maybe put a little tiny touch of white on the front part of it something like that and again just a color pattern that's all I'm looking for here is is a color pattern um, and then once I've got that done we're going to be using this same small or uh, I'm using my four but we're going to use our our number zero round for the next step so you can put this brush away take out your uh, small detail and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my number zero round brush. I usually sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I'm gonna go lower left on this one with brown paint. I like to sign mine with my initials but you could of course sign yours any way that you want. You could make up a fun symbol, you could put the date in it, you could use your full name. Some people sign theirs on the back, you can sign it wherever you want, you could hide it in within the painting, which is something that some artists do that I think is super cool. Um, any way you want is up to you. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very seasonal landscape animal portrait, <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.